get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited to have AJ Prasad. He's founder of GMR Transcription. They have over 9,000 clients, including the FBI, AT&T, and McDonald's. They provide transcription and translation services and run their seven-figure business with three employees and over 250 independent contractors. AJ, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm glad to be here. You know, I want to get into what I find when I did a lot of research. You are an expert at staff. You know, you, you put in place these systems that allow things to run smoothly. Um, and marketing. You have a digital marketing agency and you use those same things for the GMR transcription. So I want to talk about that. I want to go back early on though um, and some of your influences growing up. Where'd you grow up and, and what influenced you early on? You know, I grew up actually in, in India. Mm. I came here when I was, you know, 22 years old yeah. uh, to, to do my master's. And growing up in India, actually, I spent uh, one of my I would say the biggest impact on my life was my grandfather. You know, I was very c- close to my grandfather and grew up with him. And he was a very successful uh, 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 man. And at the same time, one of the, the humblest person that you would ever meet. Mm. So it's like I was, I always admired uh, growing up my, my grandfather. And frankly, you know, I, I still try to to, to sometimes step into his shoes and say how would he will be doing something that or react to something. Yeah. So he was my biggest influence in terms of you know taking life and yeah. and what you do. He was the most generous person that I've ever met. So it, it, he was the biggest influence. Yeah. I would AJ, say. so what did you see your grandfather doing that you learned from at the time? So so you know he first thing he would accept people without question so for you know and and even in your situation so for example if someone came in and said uh, and which we had a lot because you know india is a poor country and and we were fortunate enough to be very well off Mm -hmm. but we had a lot of relatives who were not uh, very well off and and they would always need money and it's not borrowing they would just need money because uh the family yeah yeah and uh, and when they came and they would ask my grandfather, for example, can I get uh, 1,000 rupees? I need it for X, Y, He would not challenge, he wouldn't say, why are you not managing your, which frankly, when I was little, I used to say, why he just gives <laughs> money like that? Right. But, but that's what he was. He was, he would accept people at the face value. If they yeah. said, this is, uh, you know, emergency, he will, he will do that and never second guess. And I have learned uh, as I started to get into uh, the management before I started my own business and yeah. even now managing my people, I learned, you know, either it's the people, it's my client or vendor. Yeah. I learned to take them at the face value. And just like my grandfather did, once in a while, you do get, get hit because not everyone is, is, uh, is honest like you expect them to mm-hmm. be. What I'm finding that there are far more honest people than dishonest people. You know, if the ratio probably is like one to twenty. Yeah. So I would rather deal with that. I would rather trust people and uh, and and, uh, and rather than just always doubt and be paranoid about it. And that's yeah. this is the lesson I got totally from my grandfather. I can yeah. tell you that's yeah, that is powerful. And AJ, I know that you worked for. Fortune 100 companies, and you have a lot of experience in management, marketing. What are some of the biggest lessons you learned? I know you you worked at I think Denny's, Mattel, Magellan, and in other companies. What were yep. some big lessons from some of those? So, so the first the big lesson that I learned is that the marketing thinking 
is the you know you need to to think like a marketer mm -hmm. so marketing thinking just very easily translate from one industry to another like you said you know i moved from restaurant industry to toy industry with a market leader and uh, and then i i also worked at a oil company big oil company mm. which is no longer there we call it, it was amco uh, i have worked in the in the dot com company i worked in uh, in the you know heavily funded like 500 million dollar funding uh, mm. startup uh, and and at Magellan I on the consumer electronic product and every place I hit the ground running and the the reason was that you know the all you have so long you have a logical marketing thinking it very easily translates from one place to another yeah and and that's that's what um, that's what I have done so now when I'm a my in the other business when I'm a marketing consultant and when a new company comes in and say, God, you know, do you have any experience, for example, in healthcare? Recently, we got a uh, client and about 10 months back, and they said, but you don't have any experience in healthcare. And I'm like, it's marketing, right? You know, the right. marketing fundamentals right. are still the same. Right. And uh, luckily, this person, I, we got the account, and in 10 months, they are getting like uh, literally $20 for every dollar they are spending mm. in return. So, so, so this is the the lesson that I I drove from the company. So that is the first I would say the big thing is the, how the marketing moves, and second is of course you have to consistently keep on working on make uh, making your business more efficient. Yeah. Uh, that's so, what kind of marketing you said everyone wants to put in a dollar and get twenty? So, what kind of things do you do for the health company that other people should so, be doing? So, so for for the health company, uh, and and by the way, not everyone can get dollar twenty. So I'm just want to make sure. Yeah, that yes. Not There's a disclaimer that. here. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so this this health, uh, um, you know, this this particular company. So they had, uh, you know, these health centers, right? You know, the the urgent care centers, and uh, they had absolutely no web presence. Mm -hmm. Not not nothing to do with, uh, and they had. Uh, a really old website. Uh, it was not even mobile friendly or anything, and, and they were not found anywhere. And they had a horrible re online reputation. Like you got, there were three uh, reviews on Yelp, and all of them were one, mm. one star. Right. So my first question to them was, well, tell me one thing. If are you, do you do a good job? Because if you cannot, if all your patients come in and they are going to give you one one star right there's nothing i can do right. and they said no 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 that's not true and they they had all those three and they explained what's happening as like okay that's good so what we did is first we completely redid the website and i have a by the way team of 100 people uh, close to 100 people that we handle every piece of digital marketing so we started uh, uh, by first redoing the website so and my big uh, deal there was that people now, especially when they're searching for local businesses, you'll be amazed. Uh, it was it is like 60, 70 percent or even more. They are doing it from the smartphone. Yeah. So I said, you know, if you don't come on well on a smartphone, you are not going to, to do that anywhere. You are a very local uh, business. Yeah. So we did their their web redid, redid their website. We we started doing marketing, social media, and and to create the web presence. So mm -hmm. they very quickly started to show up for the right keywords that were there, and then we launched a, a reputation development program. Now I I say very clearly, development, not a management or maintenance. Or you know you hear about reputation management, and yeah. and their goal is to push down bad things somewhere. Uh, right. In, in, There's the, several companies out there that do that. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. See, see, we, our thing is that, you know, instead of doing that, let's, let's just start building your reputation, yeah. online reputation. And, and just like any other thing, unless you ask people, uh, you know, for, for example, for reviews, then the chances are that, that one out of, uh, for every one person that will give you a good review, 20% will give you bad review because people, when they have a good experience, they come in and it's not necessarily that thinking what writing a review for you, but someone with a bad experience definitely does that. So we created an ongoing uh, program. So what happened that of course they started to get found, like I said, uh, and then then their uh, uh, say for let's take Yelp uh, Yelp rating. 
jumped from so instead of three reviews, they have now over 50 reviews, hmm. and their average is over, over you know, close to four. But, but it is four, but when you go there, all you see is all the five-star reviews. So they started getting uh, calls. So when we started, they were getting like zero customers from the internet, Yeah, people who found us. Now they are getting over 200 patients a month. Wow. You know, from the internet because luckily they track it, uh, and you know, I I help them create a process so that they will just track. So this is an example of mm-hmm. what uh, what you can do, uh, and this was, like I said, not everyone can expect it simply because this was very ripe. This is the kind of business where reputation is most important, right? right? You know, you wouldn't go to a doctor who people are saying is a really bad doctor, for example, or right. or. Uh, a facility that they are saying was filthy or whatever. Right. Uh, so reputation was very important and getting found was important. And this is, uh, internet is the major source of people searching for that in, in, uh, information. Yeah. So, and obviously that's so a that, good that, first question to ask, which is, are you even good? Because if you're bad, you're just going to get driven down deeper exactly. uh, where you're at. Um, so, you know, you say that the internet, a lot of sources, where, what sources work best for them? on the on the internet for patients because that's a large so, number so, of people yeah so what what has happened for them is we also you know all these act there are tons of things that you have you need to do now to bring uh, the the websites on you know on google page one or high page one for the keywords mm-hmm. so we brought them on, on those keywords so so what happened that now people when they're searching for for example urgent care in their area they find their website so that mm-hmm. was the first thing now when they, when they do it now the typical process of customer is they they once they see oh it's there they want to find about you so they go they want to go and check your reviews and see what kind of uh, location you have so as their um, uh, uh, you know as their uh, uh, online reputation reviews have started to get better and better because we have created a process where we only ask the the happy customers to write a review yeah. and then someone who says unhappy because we make a two step process where in the first process we just ask them right. how was the experience you know by text or by email yeah. and depending on their answer either it goes to the customer service who call them and 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 try to address uh, right. their unhappiness uh, and when if they are very if they rate high then then they are requested to write reviews on and right. we send them the right. uh, so so we create so th- this combined process them getting found uh, you know, on, uh, because they were, they are ranking very high on on many keywords, yeah. and then then the the fact that people are when they f- try to find about them, they are seeing all the nice stuff mm-hmm. uh, about them. So and then it is a good good uh, uh, you know uh, operation. You know the doctors are wonderful. It's just that you know no one, no matter how good you are, you cannot make everyone happy. Yeah, you know, and they didn't yeah. have systems in place, so it sounds like you put in some reputation development systems. So Correct. it messages them if it's bad, you know, then it goes to the staff, and if it's good, it goes to Yelp or one of the review sites. It sounds like you helped them figure out what keywords are best, and then did some search engine optimization for their site right. to get them right. up right. higher, and just kind of cleaned up the mobile presence so people can actually see their their information. Right. And, you know, we build the social media presence so that, uh, you know, <clears throat> there are people now uh, following them. We have we do a email campaign for them, you know, uh, once a month newsletter and, you know, anything like, for example, right now it's a flu season. So the newsletter when we sent out mm. and telling them over the flu season, uh, make appointment, there was many appointments. So, mm-hmm. so you, I mean, you have to adjust to the businesses, right. uh, you know, on my transcription business. We uh, decided very early to ask them to write testimonials mm-hmm. on a third-party testimonial portal. Yeah. So we just uh, we went and uh, and and we pay fairly significant amount of money every month. Yeah. And this they are so picky this portal that you cannot do anything. They are going to we we had to add it into the system so everyone that uh, does gets the work done by us, they send uh, email and saying. Um, uh, uh, please uh, review us. Right. So we knew that in the very uh, we knew that that this is very risky because only unhappy people tend to write reviews. But we were so confident of our product there, uh, the quality of transcript that we said fine. And then we have 
we are really crazy about customer service mm -hmm. here. So we sort of, we figured that if we don't get good reviews here, we, you know, it will not happen. And now we have like more than 100 reviews there. Most of them are fantastic. I, on the scale of one to 10, I guess our the average is still, you know, over eight, close to nine. So with, with that, and it's a third party, so it's a huge validation, especially since you have the, you, you, you know, you uh, talked about the client that we get still these college professors from all these Ivy Leagues and, you know, the government uh, officials and all that. So when they come in, it is rather than just put testimonials on the website, which a lot of people think that you can just write it yourself. Right. What, you know, was, going, the, what was that transition like, AJ, from Fortune 100 company to when you started out on your own? Tell me about that period it, of time. It, it, it was... Uh, it was very profound, to say the least. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I uh, I was, first thing I just want to let you know, I was pretty happy at my last job, at least, you know, it was very exciting. Uh, and uh, and I introduced a product that was, that became a big hit, hmm. you know, consumer electronic product. But then I was also fired at the same time. Really? So, uh, yeah. And, and you know, Whatever is the reason, I don't want to go into detail, and I'm I'm not a victim. I just want to let you know. Right, but right. but you know, I was fired, and and then very quickly I got an offer to become president of a competitor, uh, or, you know, of, of that company. But what what really shook me shook the foundation. Uh, first thing, I was always an entrepreneur. I always wanted to do something on my own. Right. But this time, I was kind of shocked at the at the lack of control I had over the decision of right. my life. Right. Like imagine you were, you created like, a, and I knew that this going to, and it turned out to be, you know, the rated the best consumer electronic product launched that year and all. Uh, so, so that's when I decided that, no, I'm now I'm going to do something on my own. Right. Uh, rather than, uh, than work for a corporation. So that was the first decision. Yeah. Uh, and, and frankly, because I was not planning so I had not uh, to to leave and start my own business. Yeah. So I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I fell back on my uh, expertise of marketing and corporate connection. Yeah. And I started to do consulting work uh, first. Uh, and then uh, I was not very happy with that. Hmm. Tell uh, me about the consulting work. Like what um, what kind of stuff were you doing? So so you know first I started uh, got a consulting assignment for a very large hard drive company. And and they were trying to uh, you see they they had no idea their their sales. Well, it, this is ex they created external hard drive also, and then of course hard drive that goes inside your com uh, computer. Yeah. And the sales of external hard drive hard drive was minuscule, and uh, and they were trying to figure out how we can do that. So uh, my whole idea was that listen, everyone who has a computer at home should have an external hard drive. Right? right, because uh, back it up. so that you you can store your data and you are you know comfortable that it's it's not going to be lost when right. your computer crashes. So, but they were not you know all they were doing is they were they had these hard drives external hard drives sitting in these nerd stores like you know fries and, and all that. Right. So so we started to create a whole consumer message. Yeah. In terms of how to do that, uh, you know, so so that was an example of. Yeah. Uh, the consulting. Yeah. But I ask that because I think it's really interesting. A lot of the successful business people that I've met start off as consulting to figure out what they want to do and kind of see what the market is doing while getting talking to actual customers and companies. So I'm, I'm really interested in in what you did in this path. Yeah. And, and actually what is very interesting that you'll find in the story. So I was not very happy working, doing consulting for very large corporations yeah. because why not? It was because you know you are now uh, really uh, someone looking from outside in, right? So when you are inside the corporation, at least you can make, uh, make the changes. changes. You can, I gotcha. you can push the stuff. As a consultant, you can only give your recommendation, and yeah. and then whatever is the the politics of the situation, right. it goes there. So I felt like good money I was making, but it was total waste of my effort. Yeah. They weren't changing. Yeah, and yeah. then someone asked me to. Um, to see if you can help a small business owner, he had like a $2 million business. So I'm like, sure. I went and I talked to him 
and it was a revelation i'm like it was so refreshing mm-hmm. to talk to someone who had no agenda other than how do i help my business right. grow so that's when i decided that maybe i want to focus on small businesses right and now s- small businesses are not uh, traditional marketing generally do not work for small businesses and to be very honest i hadn't I didn't had a lot of experience of traditional marketing uh, for small businesses like postcard and all that, right. you know, in the local uh, area. Right. So I wanted to work with small business. So this is 11 years back. Yeah. Uh, and I decided that maybe you know, one of my job was in the dot com company. <laughs> so I was very up on the potential for internet. What is right. going to happen? Uh, so I, I figured. You know, that's what I wanted to do because all the digital agencies at that time, they were totally focused on very large corporations. Yeah. So, I, you know, and part of the reason was that a small business couldn't pay the cost uh, of doing that. Right. So, I first thing I had to do is reduce my cost. So, I uh, opened an office in India. I hired some people there. So, that's where I have like, you know, close to 90 people on my payroll right now. Hmm. So I hired there so that my cost is going to be reasonable. And then I started targeting small businesses uh, uh, and it worked. But it was a, a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Tell me about some of the what worked at the time and what was error at the time. So, <laughs> so of course, what worked was I, you know, the idea was was uh, was definitely the right idea. Yeah. Right. You know, for the small businesses. So my my biggest problem there was that most of the small businesses, believe it or not, would tell me, I don't need a website. Why do I even need a website? And this is like so, 2003 ish, 2004, okay. 2004. So, so it was like, so my challenge was to, so first I, I made the dumb mistake just like everyone does. It's like, no, 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 I'm, I'll convince them. So I created all these marketing materials and, and I wrote a book and everything so that to educate the people. Right. Right. And then uh, in, I would say, a year later, I started to realize that, you know what, <laughs> these are, you cannot educate them. They will get educated when they want. So then I said, okay, how do I target the, the people who are already educated? Right, right. And, and trying to reach that uh, uh, target was, was a challenge. So I, so I started doing, that's when, so before I was just doing a digital strategy and website design for them. Mm-hmm. So that's when I started to look into uh, marketing. So I started with doing digital marketing for myself. And yeah. uh, and then I all of a sudden I could get people to call in, right? The people, the right customer. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I wanted to offer to other customers. So in order to, but before I was not still not confident that um, we understood or my team knew everything about digital marketing. So that's when I started this uh, GMR transcription in 2005. To, to test all this digital marketing. I mean, I had no expectation that this company will do well. All I wanted to do is see the results, like in terms of rankings, in terms of conversion mm-hmm. and all that. Uh, and and I used to, I had told my wife uh, that this, maybe this will pay my, make my car payment one day. Right. The transcription business. But it worked, it took off. And then of course, that, that was the, the first challenge was how do we how do we get the right customer? Now the second challenge was once you have the customers, right? Um, because we had no process in place at that point, uh, so I started uh, doing the the lazy stuff of just throwing the body because that's the only thing you could do at that time on the problem, right? So every new project, let's hire another person. Uh, you know, the, uh, now we have uh, uh, instead of. 50, we have 200 clients, let's have one other person for customer service. So uh, yeah. it reached a point where where the business was growing revenue wise, but I was running like Amazon used to run where for every additional sales, I will have my, pro- my, my loss will keep on growing. Yeah. So, so, so that's when I started to focus on the processes now coming from a big company that helped me. And so, so we created the process, streamlined everything and yeah. that's where now we are able to run uh yeah so what are some of the processes that you put in place that you streamline that uh, you know maybe someone who didn't work for a fortune 100 company wouldn't even think to put in place yeah so sure i'll, I'll tell you so first thing that fortune uh, you know uh, 100 companies will they don't create a process based on the need which is what i did like you know i was a small business so 
I started to 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 look at the biggest challenges. So so to give an example, I will give the example of transcription business. So one because we had so many independent uh, uh, contractors, right, and they were doing all the work. So so there was one person whose job was really to keep up with who has done what work so that we can pay them. And right. we know that that's the right um, amount of work. So, yeah. so there was just one person basically doing that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, assigning the uh, the files, you know, we did not have automated systems, so which meant uh, a client will upload the file. Now someone is calling all these uh, transcribers, independent contractors and say, hey, because you know, these contractors also work for other people. Right. So it's not like they're always waiting there for the work. So we have to ask them and say, are you available? There's this kind of work. So I had someone calling them all all the time. And then then when it was done, then it, it went to for the QA, went to another transcriber, then we had to ask them for, for QA and everything. Mm. So 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 it's very manual. Did, someone would upload exactly. it. Then someone would some a customer would upload their file and then Correct. there would be a person who would have to call people to get someone to, you know, actually transcribe it Correct. and then it had to be passed along you'd have to call someone to get the quality assurance exactly and it was right. very manual process yeah. yeah so so we changed that uh, so first thing we i realized that for every uh, project that is uploaded and when when it is client assigned to the uh, type uh, typist we know the duration we know how much we are paying them right right and so i so first thing i said is 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 just create a tracking system in the back end so that it automatically just adds it. So for each, uh, so what we did is we automated the system so much so that instead of typist sending us the invoice, the system would just generate the invoice for the typist because it had all the information, send us a copy, send a typist a copy so that if there, there's any question, uh, if we are missing something, which it will never happen because, of course, you know, it comes through the system. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we did that. We totally automated it. And the first reaction result was oh, I didn't need one person right. Right, to do that. The second thing we, we did is we had created all the typist databases properly with their uh, IAM and everything. And then we created a process where we can send the message to Everyone. So all, all someone had to do is select these t 10 typists who would be the right person, for example, to do the transcription and send IM and say, hey, you know, this is project is available. Uh, if you are interested, it's first come first basis. Right. right. Uh, uh, and uh, all of a sudden there was no problem. As a matter of fact, uh, before there were typists who sometimes won't pick up a phone because they knew that it's about a project and they are watching a TV program or something. Right. And they knew that it will be waiting for them. Uh, all of a sudden, now there's a competition. So they knew right. that, hey, if they don't react immediately, someone else will. Right. Uh, so, so that totally, uh, now we spend, we still get, I would say, close to 500 files a week. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and then it, it doesn't even take us more than 30 minutes to assign those files. Right. So, so that was, you know, so that piece was automated. Yeah. Uh, I had always started with the system that the transcript will be posted and the client can just log in and pay for it and get the transcript. So mm -hmm. we just uh, stayed with that piece uh, as is. Uh, so th so there was not not um, we we did that, and then then we started to tweak uh, like uh, the typist with their expertise and everything. So that instead of going and selecting that, we can just just say this expertise and it like if someone say, is like a medical audio then maybe someone has expertise in medical terminology yes. so they'd be better to transcribe exactly, it right. or legal you know or academic or something and uh, so so just by fine-tuning it so you know my uh, approach and we are still fine-tuning I wouldn't say that everything is done so my approach yeah. always was that anything where we are spending a lot of manual hours yeah let's take a look at it and see how we can automate it yeah uh, that's a great so, rule, AJ, that we should all have, actually. if we Figure out where you're spending the most time and see what part of it you can automate. Correct, correct. correct. Yeah. So at that point, you had automated the – you automate the, the system, right? Uh -huh. And I want to go back to – because it's, it's pretty amazing even onboarding or hiring 250 or more contractors – um, mm -hmm. What were some of the mistakes early on with hiring and what things do you put in place now so that doesn't happen? 
so the uh, first thing my biggest mistake was which i corrected very quickly was i thought i can get it done in india transcription mm. <laughs> so every Not the case. You know, but after first 25 transcript i realized that they cannot do that because mm. you need someone with the exposure of us lingo and and the us uh, you know culture and all in order to do that so so then my mistake was so so and by then people had started to uh, contact us right so we'll just call the transcriber and say, oh, so they will say, yeah, we do this kind of transcription. So we'll send them um, you know, uh, a project. Uh, and I offer, I always, still I offer my client 100% money back guarantee if right. they don't do that good job, uh, accurate job. So then it was hit and miss. Some transcribers were very good. Some transcribers were very bad. Right. Uh, and, and then the other thing that happened was we would get phone calls from we started phone calls because the word started to spread that we are hiring. Yeah. So we'll get phone calls, 10 phone calls a day. People oh. are saying, hey, no, I want to become a transcriber. What do I do? So so we automated that again. Yeah, so, so we what said, did you okay. do? Yeah. So, so what we did is on, on the career. So we said, okay, you go and you fill up all the form. You know, when you want to do it, it's online. Okay, even if someone calls, we just say, you go to the website. So made it totally online, fill up the form. And after they fill up the form, then they would be able to download. So we created some test files, and 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 you know we have like 25 random test files and the and the exact transcript. So so what we did is we we said okay you do the the test file, you download one so randomly they will get something and then you transcribe it if you want to work for us and submit it. Okay, if you are not willing to do that, we are not interested. Right. So so and then what I did is I also had. India write a program because now you see whatever they are uh, uh, they are submitting, we know that there is a gold standard for that, right? Because right. we already a certain have amount a of accuracy, standard. right? So, so we had in uh, you know my uh, development team write a matching program so that it will just match. It will say how many, what percent is close. You know, we say ninety eight percent minimum, so has to be. Uh, and the formatting, so so first thing that system does, and then my uh, someone manually just quickly opens it, sees that okay, formatting everything is done based on the instruction because again, <clears throat> it is there. Uh, so so those tests now takes us literally uh, for each person it takes like one minute maybe mm -hmm. for each applicant uh, of a manual uh, time because everything is now automated. Yeah. Uh, before. You can imagine someone submits it and and then there's a live person matching right their transcript with the with the ideal transcript and deciding based on that whether it's good bad or ugly so so again that was taking so much time and that was not even productive because right. we're not making it we don't charge transcribers for test or anything yeah so yeah. automating that saved us a lot of money in the in the bottom line straight away yeah so yeah so that was you automated some of the hiring, and then what's the challenges with onboarding? Or what what else do pe should people know about actually? So you have certain people passing. Is there a process people should um, you know look to you about how you onboard people once they you decide to hire them? Yeah. So so you are talking with the transcribers, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so f uh, once they pass the test. So that's the so once they pass the test, then we, you know, there is a very extensive process because they have to sign uh, the NDA. They have to to sign the fact right. that they will have, uh, you know. So there are requirements that that they have to sign that they will meet all these requirements, uh, and and uh, and then you know we because we do uh, W nine because those are W nine people and and we we pay every two weeks. So either they have a choice, which 99% of the people yeah. uh, opted for that, that they can get the money wired straight to their bank. So we almost we think of it as we run a payroll every two right, weeks. Right. I mean, and, is there any training process, or do they just hit the ground running right away? They hit the ground ground running. I mean, frankly speaking, yeah. if someone who is not uh, trained, uh, we are not interested. There was a time when I was recommending the people who failed. Yeah. to a, a to a training portal and then uh, i started seeing on the on the uh, this thing uh, on the internet saying the gmr transcription must be a fraud because 
I'm so experienced, they fail me and then they're trying to, they must have an affiliate program with this, this uh, you know, uh, training portal. Mm. So we said, forget it. Uh, I, w I was just trying to help, saying, right. hey, you know, you fail, but if you want to get trained, you go there. So now we just say, you know, fail, pass. And to be very honest, we get uh, close to 10 applicants a day. Mm. So, and, and, and probably like 15, 20 on weekends. So with three, four hundred yes. people applying every month, I really don't care. I mean, right. we, we have about <laughs> you want one percent of the people pass, yeah. by the way. Right yeah. Now. Wow. One percent of the applicant pass our test and rest of the people before I would say, hey, you know, maybe you want to get some training. Now I just say sorry. Yeah. So early on, AG, it was obviously systemizing the, the, the spots where you're spending the most time. What are the biggest challenges today that you're working on? So, so today, of course, the, the, the challenges are growing is always a, ch uh, right. You know, the, mm -hmm. the sales growth is, is, is an ongoing process yeah. so that, that you, I, I, you know, I know that, um, that we could be 50 times bigger than what we are right now. So it's always a strategy in terms of how do we get more, increase the revenue. That's, that's a big ongoing challenge mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, and then, then making sure that the operation is running smoothly because if the moment you ignore it things start to to fall through the cracks right. and and like i said you know we are we pride ourselves on on customer service we pride ourselves on the quality right. of, of transcripts so so we are very vigilant if we if i get you know the only time i spend maybe 30 minutes a week on the transcription business now mm -hmm. because it, it runs on you know i have a marketing team in india that is doing so everything is running yeah. except if I see any complaint, I get still all the emails. And the only time I get involved is if I see any complaint, which luckily is very few and far between, hmm. but it happens. And that's when I, I immediately get involved because I just want to make sure that, you know, nothing, we don't get rusty. Right. So what is the 13 minutes? What do you do for that 13 minutes per week? Oh, 30 minutes. It's, oh, it's 30 just minutes. Okay. Sit, sitting, uh, you know, sitting down with the team, to if there is any issue, you yeah. know, what, what, what kind of issue, because, you know, they just, they don't even think about uh, talking to me about anything. So yeah. I just want to stay on top. So, so it's a meeting where you kind of make sure every, you know, there's any issues that need to get resolved and quality Correct. control Correct. at a higher level. And then, so go back for a second, AJ, you know, what's interesting is transcription seems so random. Why mm -hmm. transcription business? You know, because like I said, I wanted to create a business for myself, right? right? Uh, to test my marketing. Yeah. Uh, um, acumen. So, and then during when I was doing the consulting, I was this this bigger uh, hard disk uh, company, and I was a spoiled. You know, from the very first job that I got in corporate, I had a assistant. Right. So I never learned how to really type or write very fast. I mean, I used to dictate because my handwriting was so bad that I started dictating and I never worked on my handwriting. So I learned very quickly that when now that I was on my own and I didn't have my second employee in, in US until 2007, right? So, and, or actually early 2008. So for three, four years, I was on my own here in this country and I had people working for me. Uh, so I started uh, um, recording it. So I will record our discussion, then I will come back, I'll listen to it, and I will mm. jot down the notes. And, yeah. you know, and so in one of those meetings went on for seven hours. Wow. So when I came back, I'm like, geez, it was seven hours listening to it, writing it, you know, it would take me like 15 hours. So I thought maybe I can get a transcript done because right. I knew that it was a medical transcription and all that. I started contacting people. The first thing, no one had a system. So they, they are like, where do you, is your recording? And it was in a digital recorder so there were some people said can you send me a digital recorder i'm like no uh and then the other thing was that the pricing was just crazy i mean you know so someone for seven hours i got quotes of eleven thousand wow. dollars uh you know thirteen hundred dollars six seven thousand there was no rhyme or reason uh, on the pricing that's a huge range so, yeah so so uh, long story short i ended up doing it myself but in the back of my mind, I knew that there is a need for a, a transcription uh, company yeah. that is very transparent in pricing so that you know that if you have one hour of recording, how much it will cost you, yeah. right? And having 
you know, broadband had just started at that time in 2005. Yeah. So having uh, ability to upload the, just the digital files up there. Uh, so so that's where, and I already had a development team. So I spent one thousand dollars to build this whole thing. Oh. You know, the company and just doing as DBA, and so and it started to work. So so this was the uh, the logic and and I. Frankly, I thought that only marketing consultant may be interested in this because I had no idea what are the other need for applications. Yeah. So where did you start? How did you get your first customers and what what market did you end up focusing on? So I always like to test. Uh, I always tell even my current clients when the when they come up with a new idea, the easiest way to test it is is paid advertising, yeah. like Google AdWords right. kind of thing. So that's where I started. I, I first I started testing with Google AdWords just to see in what kind kind of keywords people are clicking on and all that, so that I can ask my SEO team to do that. Yeah. Uh, now, when I just from Google AdWords, I it dawned on me that the market is very big hmm. because I was getting calls from professors, I was call, getting calls really? from writers who did the interview from you know for uh, attorneys. So so I you know and some marketing people. Uh, very very few, so I started to realize that okay there there is uh, this this market, and by then I had uh, understood what are the the keywords. Now, uh, frankly, on AdWords at that time I was not making so much. I was just breaking even maybe. You're just AdWords testing box. it. Yeah, but then what happened because I knew that what keywords people are using when they are searching for this service, and then I gave it to my India team and say hey you prove it to me. Uh, you know, because I had hired a new marketing team and I said, just prove it that that you know what you're talking about. See what you can do. And they launched the campaign. And uh, actually for the major keyword, I became number one in 2007. And then business started to literally double year after year wow. uh, from from that point. That was so SEO, that was- not paid advertising. They, they put in place SEO. Exactly right. Paid advertising. I was breaking even, maybe making a little bit of yeah. money uh, on on the cost. But SEO, the advantage what I have found about SEO is, is your cost is same, the monthly cost, but but your return keeps on increasing year the long after term. Year. Yeah. But sometimes people feel it's hard to crack that SEO code. What's some of the things people should be doing? You know, uh, I we we do. Everything. So, what happens? The SEO code cracking is relatively easy if you have a local business. Okay, if you're doing things right and you're a local customer, no problem. If you have a niche business, no problem. But if you have, you know, suppose you have an online clothing store. Yeah, I mean, because you now have a global, getting, you have a global business with transcription, so you compete against correct. not just local in California or Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we get wor- uh, work on a regular basis from Germany, from UK, mm-hmm. Spain, uh, France, yeah. Switzerland. Yeah. And so then how do you compete? Every, yeah. Uh, because you see, they, there, what now? What I have, what has happened that in in the beginning, Google was not really uh, their uh, algorithm was different. So so they were they were not emphasizing local, right? So I became number one everywhere in the world. <laughs> Anywhere in the world you type transcription services will be number one. And, and that stayed there for three, four years. Okay. And then 2012, Google totally changed the algorithm and actually we got slammed and, and now we are just crawling back up. Mm. But by then what had happened that we already had built a, a, a base of customers that were very happy. Yeah. Right. So we're going to come so, back and keep buying. So we started getting their business and their referrals. And I will tell you that we we sign up about I would say fifteen new uh, uh, customers every week for transcription. Mm. Wow. Right now they automatically come, and at least fifty percent of those are referrals because we ask them how did you uh, right. you know find us. Right. So 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 now that we have a good base of ninety five hundred plus <clears throat> customers who are happy, uh, we you know out of that ninety five hundred getting uh, for example five hundred a year is. <laughs> Is uh, you know referral is yeah. is a very reasonable, yeah. and that's what is happening uh, now. We are we are still uh, on the on on keywords also. We we still get business through Google, yeah. and we are working it. But Google is almost I feel like they are they are just making it impossible for you to 
make business only through SEO. Right. To make profit. Yeah. Uh, if you are also doing AdWords, it seems like your and which Google will deny 100% every time. But it seems to me that every time we are we start to do uh, AdWords, also <clears throat> the organic ranking starts going up so much so that oh, really there are some some local business like dentists which is a very uh, comparative business so when when we get a dentist client i i don't even tell the dentist but in the fee itself i just said hey you know let's not make any profit for the last first three months and we'll just do uh, adwords some adwords so we'll spend like 500 dollars per month on adwords my own money because somehow it seems to totally boost the uh, the search that's yeah right? Yeah, that's interesting. And then, yeah, so uh, and after that, once it reach, reaches there, then I, I, I go to the client and say, do you want me to continue doing AdWords? Because uh, I didn't ask you, I didn't charge you for that. But here's the budget. And this is what return that you are getting because, you know, we track all that. Right. And most of the time client, so long they are making more money than they are spending, they will say yes. Exactly. It's a no brainer. Right. Exactly right. So what kind of clients do you decide to take or not take? Because it sounds like you can be choosy. Yeah. You see, now we have become choosy because we took too many clients in the beginning. Whoever came, we signed up. Uh, so so now uh, the clients that we take is, is the two criteria. First, they understand digital marketing. So I'm not into educating uh, right. someone uh, and say, you should be doing digital marketing. So most of the clients that come to us already had some bad experience. As you know, SEO has a lot of really bad players. Mm -hmm. And then, then we just, we always tell them, we just don't do SEO only because it just doesn't help. Right. We do both paid traffic, yeah. social media, everything that, for them, retargeted advertising, email. Uh, so first thing I want to make sure that the client knows that they need digital marketing. And then second is they are able to pay. So there, there is another problem in, the, in this business that I'm in that there are just way too many people who will say promise you the world and say oh you just pay me 300 dollars a month or right. 200 dollars a month uh, and a lot of businesses get hooked into it now they always almost 100 percent of the time they will after certain time frame they say okay it's not working and then if either they drop it and say it's not for me or they will start to search for the like a serious companies like ours uh, so so you know they need to have the um, you know the budget now having said that i always tell my clients that my goal is to start to get positive return on investment as soon as possible because i know that no one is going to stay with you for a long time unless yeah. they start to see the results so generally speaking uh, we uh, you know like this uh, uh, this urgent care people you know we had promised they have three locations we had promised uh, that you'll probably start to break even in 6 months they yeah. started breaking even in three months. Yeah. So we we always we we figure out what is the what we think it. You don't want to over promise, in other words. Yeah, and I yeah. typically double it because yeah. I would rather lose customer by under promising than right. uh, gain it by over promising. So AJ, how do you get a company like FBI to use transcription services? <clears throat> so same thing, you know. So you have a FBI, you know, all of a sudden they need to get files, files transcribed. What do they do? It's like if they don't have anyone, is it generally speaking, all these organizations have dedicated people yeah. in, you know, who does the transcription. But then what happens is this person goes, you know, you know, government. So they go on on vacation for six weeks or whatever. And so during that place, what do you do? So you, you go on Google and you say transcription services company, right? right? Or, or whatever. Uh, and then then, it, then they, you find me. So that's one way. And then you contact us. And if you if you did a search and you talk to the top ten uh, um, companies that show up for transcription, yeah. I can almost guarantee you that you won't be able to talk to more than two people. So 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 then or the other thing is that they go to other people and say, hey, you know, have you used anyone? Do you know where do I get transcription? So there, if if someone has done, it, it's like, yeah, you know, I I, I use this yeah. company. So that's how is happening they find us they can't talk to us yeah. uh, of course as you can imagine fbi they are very picky about the uh, the security and all those things so we explain to them you know the security level and then they uh, you know they uh, register those individuals and upload the file yeah so aj what do you consider some of the big milestones in the business 
<clears throat> so so my my number one milestone is for sales okay <clears throat> so any business model that in fact i tell my you know i do get entrepreneurs also who come in and they say you know i have a web based business what do i do and i always tell them please save your money on 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 fancy furniture and the offices and all those things you know just biggest validation of your business is sales right so so to me the number one milestone is can you get the sale okay number two milestone is the delivery uh, did you deliver it and and is the customer happy right i i will tell you that on transcription the first 100 customer probably would never come to me again even they don't care that how what kind of reviews we are getting because there was many of them were so disgusted by the quality right mm. but so i knew that there was a demand but then i there was a time when i thought about closing the company because i'm like you know I, i'm not able to um, uh, execute this thing so you want to make sure that you have a happy customer because of the quality i mean early on yeah, when you were in exactly. india as opposed to the us correct correct yeah. correct so, and so so once you have a happy customer then then you want to make sure that are they going to refer or are they going to come back if these three things happens i think that now you know that you have a real business and and so at that point then you start to th- to think about the processes and how do yeah. i grow more business i mean i always what i did uh, for transcription to get the boost is i started offering more services to my existing customer yeah so we added translation services we added uh, mm. you know editing and proofreading and all and we started getting more business from the people that we already that mm, had already makes started. sense yeah yeah uh, so so that's the so those are the three things if you are not able to sell your product then there's something wrong you are, you have to sell it to right. to validate it and then the next is you do you have a happy customer yeah uh, and and even just asking them and say hey you know because it's not necessary that everyone is going to need your service again or know someone who needs it but just doing a survey like for example we do quarterly survey of all the new customers who sign up on or, or not even a new existing customer but whoever has has given us work during that quarter we send them a survey satisfaction survey mm-hmm. so just knowing doing all those very simple process now thanks to survey monkey everything is so yeah. inexpensive now yeah that that that's what i always tell people once you have a happy customer who are buying your product and willing to come back again and buy or recommend their friends and family they buy yeah you have a business now let's talk about how do we scale yeah so aj you've decades of experience what's it going to take to get to the next level right now what are you thinking about at night so so the 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 next level to get to the next level is obviously uh, the first thing is that you know the additional services that that we are offering what you know what can be done mm-hmm. okay and 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 then now for say you know the the i have two businesses right so to get to the next level for gmr web team is really to get more bigger clients yeah right who, who have the i would say the capacity to pay more and get more right. the, a better result for for transcription it is it is you know different so now we are saying okay so internet growth we are getting it and and like i said we have 50 60 new people are signing up how do we get more so now we are looking at vertical markets for example you know there are court reporters who need who are on a ongoing basis yeah, they need yeah. transcription there are like interpreting services so yeah. now we are looking at these uh, mm-hmm. vertical market and see how we embed in that market so that we become their go to yeah. uh, uh, company for yeah. uh, you know, for transcription. Yeah, looking at those vertical markets that are continual buyers so that Correct. yeah, I see. Um what's the hardest part of your job? I mean you run two companies. Um you have a lot you of know, staff. My my hardest part I would uh, first I would tell you I really enjoy running my company. So Yeah, you uh, seem very calm for someone who yeah. you know has like 300 or 400 employees in contractors. Because I don't think, <laughs> think about it. You know, I have people So so that's where mm. I I lucked out where I have built a team mm. where I really do not get involved in day, day-to-day operation a whole lot. Yeah. You know, I get involved at the strategy level for all my right. new clients. I get uh, I stay involved in in the execution and and kind of be on top of it to see how mm-hmm. it is getting executed, but I am yeah. not doing the work. I have my team doing it. Right. So 
so so so that is not a problem mm. at all uh, for me and then uh, you know my hardest thing actually is the team in india mm. i mean my team here in in my us office is fantastic yeah i mean they, they i can be out for one month and i won't even miss the beat but what happens that the indian team first thing i have to be totally stay on top i, I have more meetings you know with them on skype on go to meeting with india i would say five times more meeting than i have with my team here who has just i can walk 10 steps to go to their office and the other thing is that they have a tendency to go in all directions so so they start to disintegrate uh, after a certain period of time so which means that i have to go to it's a motivate two three times a month not to motivate and mm. to just go and say hey you know this is the process this is right this is wrong Hmm. which is a really extensive two weeks uh that for example next wednesday i'm flying to india hmm. you know so we half and you go there aj two to three times a month that's a lot uh, sorry a year oh a year okay year. i was going to say that's a lot but, two, but three times a month, yeah. it is as you start to get old it is kind of exhausting yeah you know it's 24 hours journey to go there so that i will be honestly will be my i think is the hardest part of my uh, my job right now and i wish i could replace hire someone to replace me for that india trip but I, it's very hard to do that yeah yeah what's some of the software you use to run your business i know you mentioned survey monkey what are some other tools that people should be using you know uh, the, so so we use like uh, sem moz we use with, mm-hmm. you know for you know for uh, uh, very extensively uh, we use couple of software now the so skipping me for planning the social media and and execution mm-hmm. uh, for that uh and there is this uh, geez you know i have to uh, there is this uh, website that that checks for vulnerability and it has a really weird name hmm. uh it will it will it will come to me or later on i can send it to you uh so so this this is the website where you can put your url Mm-hmm. and it will tell you uh, how secure your site is oh wow and and by the way this this website is used by the government officials and and all that and if you go there it clearly says that um, you know you are promising that you are not using it to figure out find out the website that is vulnerable right. so that you can uh, check them like you so, check like chase bank like chase.com and you're like oh yeah there's a vulnerability yeah <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> So 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 they are really it is a really fantastic one uh, uh, you know the site that we use very extensively uh, and and like i said i don't personally use anything uh, because i just manage it and i have all these people who are using right. it so i know some of the tools that they yeah. use so that's what i'm telling yeah yeah you probably recommend the tools and they they kind of implement them um so Aj, I have one last question or two last questions. So I appreciate your time. And uh, before I ask, I want you to tell people where can they find you know the web uh, company, the transcription company. Where can they find you online? Where do they where should they check out? Sure. So my web company is uh, www. gmr web team. dot com. Mm-hmm. Gmr comes from Global Marketing Resources. That was mm-hmm. the parent. uh and the, the transcription business is gmr transcription like mm-hmm. i told you it started as a dba and then now it's a separate corporation mm-hmm. and my office number is is uh, is there on the site 7147 oh. so people can actually dial in and get your office number and get you yeah oh. 7147319000 definitely uh and uh, you know all they have to do is is tell them that they listen to me on your uh, show and they won't be screened because we get a lot of sales calls so yeah yeah so the front desk always kind of screens them i'm sure uh, yeah and and my uh, email is ajay@gmrwebteam.com yeah your team i have to say is very responsive so okay. yes okay. um my last question aj your last two questions is you know since it's inspired insider what's been the lowest point and how you push through and then what's been the proudest moment you know the the lowest prime uh, point frankly was uh all these unhappy customers for uh gmr transcription and at the same time because like i told you in the beginning anyone who walked in i took their uh, them as a client i had so many i would say problem clients more than not unhappy but problem client who wanted yeah. too much of my attention 
So in 2005, you know, that was the time frame where uh, I almost uh, was thinking that maybe I should uh, freshen up my resume. Yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, it's not the right thing for me to do. And it continued in 2006. And then, then luckily, what changed my perspective is uh, the company that had fired me, it was bought out by another company and, and it just so happened that the new VCs knew me uh, personally. So they contacted me and they said, hey, you know, would you be interested in coming back as a CEO? So as you can imagine, it's, it's a big boost. Big to opportunity. Ego. That more than, or, you know, it was, of course, it was a big ego boost that, <laughs> you know, they fired me and now the same company is asking me whether I would be interested. And they were not offering, they said, if you're interested, then you can throw your hat in the right. ring. If right. you want to come in as a senior VP, you have a job. And so I went and talked to my wife and I told her about this thing. And her reaction was, so what would you do after two years when you're fired again? Wow. Or when they let you go, they are sold or whatever happens, which is what the tenure of a typical CEO is these mm. days. So that's when I, I said, you know, I have to, to really go back and, and work on it. So from high, then, I, I, then the resolution came and said, no, I have to, to really uh, yeah. help it. So and your wife gave you a reality check. <laughs> big time. And what did you say? What did you say to her when she said that? I just looked at her and I'm like, you know, I'm so stupid. <laughs> How come I didn't think of this? <laughs> and uh, and so that was the end of that discussion. And, yeah. and then like, okay, I have to 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 do this. And then then the high point was obviously when we started uh, for GMA transcription when it hit seven figures. You know, that was a that was a huge thing that we celebrated. And, you know, for, for my GMR web team, we have many high points, you know, when we, we recently signed up with a, with a really major client here. When, when I'm saying major, they are like maybe $20 million company, yeah. but literally they are going to be completely, they are dependent on us for the whole backend processes and everything and marketing. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, uh, international company we hired and I had promised them that they will break even at least by the end of the year. Uh, of the relationship because it was a large company and second month of the relationship they were breaking even on mm. on my cost so so those are it's free the, leads the, yeah yeah that that was and that was also such a big relief because then i knew that i have this client and it always helps to be able to to tell people and and i i also give them uh, their name as a reference yeah uh, when to my you know prospective clients so, so those, those are kind of high points. Yeah. Just so what do you do, AJ, to celebrate? So you hit seven figures. What do you do? So what we do is over here, we would, uh, would party. So, mm -hmm. so when, when, you know, recently when we signed this big client, we just all, we said, hey, look, okay, let's just close the office, just change the voice message. And we went out for three, four hours to uh, Minihana and, and partied mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, depending on what happens on uh, transcription, we, we did some bonus for the staff and and so so first thing we party anything that good happens i love yeah. to party so we'll, mm -hmm. you know sometimes we'll just just bring in food over here and and enjoy sometimes we go out but but we do that and then uh, uh, reward the people because yeah. i don't do anything like i told you i'm just kind of facilitator so i know that all the success is happening because of the people working for me yeah I reward them whenever something good happens. Yeah. AJ, this has been really valuable. I appreciate you explaining your process and in the behind the scenes. What uh, what words should we leave people with? What should they start doing now if they do have a business and they want to you know, increase sales and make it run smoother? So, of course, you know, first thing I always say, if you are starting a business until you have sold, you know, the three steps I told you, it's not a validation. It's not a real business. But once you have a real business, then you, then I always tell people that now it's your time to sit down and, and kind of almost like draw your ideal customer. Hmm. And once you draw the ideal customer, then you start to figure out how to reach them because you will know where they go to, you know, what platform they are on, yeah. uh, where they are located and all that. And then come up with the pro plan. And the best thing for any plan to test is do AdWords because very cheaply you can test the, uh, the success of it yeah. uh, for that. So, so that's where once you start to 
sales start to happen. I did it very late. I'm telling you, that's the, you know, I'm telling you from a mistake that it is so important to identify your ideal customer as soon as possible. Mm. I always tell people, even when you are starting, identify that because uh, th that will, you know, that will reduce a lot of heartburn later on. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. AJ. Thank you so much. Everyone should check out gmrtranscription.com and gmrwebteam.com. Thank you so much, AJ. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.